G'day, I'm Ian Heron. Played in the 92 and 93 Grand Finals for the Dragons. Was fortunate enough to have a decade in the NRL. Went to England, uh, played for a couple of years, culminating playing for Ireland in the 2000 World Cup. Year eight, a uh, PE teacher uh, gave it to me. Uh, he said, I, I got legs like a chicken or chook legs. It wasn't too long after that that you know I was running out at Cogger and I saw signs to chook heron and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, it's one of those ones where it just originated in year eight and has been with me ever since. I was sitting at home about two o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon and, and the phone rang and he said, hey, Chook at Smithy, he said, um, I want you to meet me down at Cogger in half an hour. I said, what's on? He said, well, you know, we've lost the last few games through goal kicking. Uh, if you can kick seven out of 10, you know, you got getting your opportunity in first grade. Sure enough, and this is no, no story at all. I got there, it was six from nine. Uh, and I needed this last one. It wasn't too far, it was sort of, you know, in between the sideline and the post, if you like. I nailed it. And he shook me hand, he said, see you here in an hour's time for training. You're in first grade. Mick Potter was there, uh, Michael Beattie. Uh, again, I had you know had huge respect for these guys. Had been around a while and, and, and done it at the top for, for quite some time. Uh, Mark Coyne, Brad Mackay. It was a really good time to be at the club uh, and a great time to be playing footy in the, in the early 90s. Almost mechanical in his actions. It's funny when you when you're doing it with no cameras around, and you've got no one watching. You, you, you just as I said, it just developed over time. And then when you see yourself back after you know a game on TV, you think, "Geez, that looks a bit strange." It was about three steps back, and then maybe you know one, uh, two to the left, and then just a little shimmy that way, <laughs> just until it felt right. But why change something that wasn't you know exactly broken? Uh, and for me, it didn't. I don't really care about what it looked like, as long as the, the result was what it is that we needed. Welcome back to the Sydney Football Stadium on Grand Final Day 1992. I don't think you ever really get over it, you know what I mean? If you ask me today, I, you know, I still think, well, well, I really, you know, wish we could have won one. Looking back, we weren't, we were lucky to get there because we had some really hard semi-finals, you know, 3-2 against Newcastle, 4-0 against you know, Illawarra to make it. I think we'd, we'd run out of puff uh, and, and Brisbane were by far and away the best team in, in 92 and deserved their title. It provided me with, you know, huge impetus to, to get ready and, and go again for the next year. The grand final for 1993. We had a great team. Great young kids coming through, it's in, it's in Gordon Tallis and, and Brownie as well, Jason Stevens, unfortunately. Um, for me, looking back, he was a big loss, broke his thumb in the first tackle. Uh, and then Mark Coyne, who was on fire through that semi-final series, uh, did his ankle in, in about the first 10 minutes. So we had two of our key strike players um, basically out of the game after 10 minutes. Yeah, it really, it really hurt us from there. I have had a few people say, you know, what did you say to her or what did she say to you? I can't really remember, to be honest. Uh, I just lost a grand final. So, yeah, I just lost a grand final. It's just, yeah, a, a real down point for, for me in my career. Because unlike 92, uh, we should have we should have been our, it should have been our year. Finally, when I made the decision to, to go over to Parramatta and you know the, the class of play it was over there, and I knew that Brian Smith had been in England, was coming back to coach. No, I was excited. Certainly in, in the couple of years that I was there, we, we played in the semi-finals both times, but again, you know, uh, injuries to key players and just running out of puff at, at, at the end of the year, uh, you know, really got us. Gateshead was a newly formed franchise and we're exempt from, uh, you know, the overseas quota of players. So it was essentially like 20 Australian players over there, like an Australian touring party, if you like. Over there, if you're playing on a regular basis, it's, it's good. But if you're, if you're out of the routine and you're sitting around in that gloomy weather, it just does your head in. So I think that just said we made the decision to, to come back and uh, settle in into whatever the next chapter was going to be in my life. Looked in the, in the paper on a Sunday and there was an ad in the paper for Val Morgan uh, wanting a sales rep. So I said, oh, I like the movies and I knew nothing about sales or marketing. Uh, so I'll ring up and go for that. Anyway, ended up getting the job and was there for 18 and a half years. So I started as a sales rep, worked my way through to GM of sales, looking after all the national sales team, uh, holding various uh, you know, senior management roles in that time. And that, and that roles, various roles that I had taught me a hell of a lot about business, a hell of a lot about sales and marketing to the point where it's got me to, to, to being the director and owner of my own media agency. 
but I wasn't uh, an international player by no means, but I actually able to carve out a career of, of over a decade in, the, in that time. And, you know, I'd like to think that I'd, you know, help the teams that I played in um, to, to win some games and you know, it's nice to be remembered uh, for the times that I was in rugby league.